So in this episode of Coach's Eye, we're going to be looking at the backhand surfing. And let me tell you this, it's pretty damn amazing from the clip that, uh, that Clay has asked me to get up, but it's the backhand surfing of Jeremy Flores. Clay is going to tell you a story in just a moment. But first of all, I just want to say, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure that you do. Also, I highly recommend that you head over to the Ombi apps to get your free access to the Ombi method. I'm going to run a quick ad for you now so you can see exactly what it looks like. The Ombi app is free to download and you'll get access to exclusive content and our free surf coaching program, the Ombi method. Also, join now for two weeks, free access to our premium content. Download the app now. So guys, if you haven't got the app yet, make sure that you head over and you download that. The link will be in the description below. But let's jump into today's coach's eye, Jeremy Flores. You started telling me a story. I said, hang on a minute, let's well, go back. Mick Fanning says when the Superbank turned on, that's kind of where he started to find his groove and he started to figure out his surfing clicked. And likewise, Connor Coffin said a very similar thing about surfing Rincon. They, they got mm. these perfect right-handers and they started to hone their surfing. Well... At the bottom of Africa, we've got two islands. One's called Mauritius, the other one's called Reunion. And Jeremy Flores grew up on Reunion, which is a, a, a French island. And basically, there's a surf spot there called St. Louis, which is this perfect, perfect left. And um, it takes off from the outside, wraps, and actually grows and gets bigger as it grows. It's this amazing <laughs> wave. Easy takeoff. Yeah, it's the same. It gets horrible as you go it's down. It's the same place that Joan de Frey came from. Okay. Yeah. So um, both of them have developed really, really strong backhands. And I would just like to kind of highlight some of the, the takeaways from Jeremy Flores' backhand. Bear in mind, surfing has also helped him on his um, path to become part master. Yeah. Now, I don't think that this footage is from, um, from it's Reunion not, Island. But the technique would be the same. Okay. Yeah. First of all, let's just have a look and then... Oh my gosh. <laughs> so at the gates. <laughs> oh that turn was insane. Just, insane. At the time of recording this, we've oh, just we've, sorry. We've, we've just recorded a video before where it was it was me down at down at the wave pool surfing on my backhand. <laughs> and it, it was not looked nothing like this. Far out. This guy is a machine. Okay. So yeah. what, let's 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 rewind to the start of that clip. What is it that we're going to take away from Jeremy Flores that we can try and attempt to put into our surfing? Although looking at this, I think we've got quite a few, most of us have quite a few years to go before we get anything close to this. All right, so. Look at that thing. When he's turning, look at, look at how much lip he's angling at. Like, I think it looks like it's about to go over the top of him. Yeah, he, he's seeing that. Like, it, it's super, super critical. He's almost going to hit it upside down in the barrel. And, oh, that, that is upside down. It's nuts. But, we, and he's looking right back at the foam ball. And he holds that turn. Look at it. The extension. His back, his, his back was bent like a banana. That was insane. This is probably my favorite of all of them, though. Watch this one. Now, remember the wave pull that you said that your surfing was always a little bit flat, and yeah. I'm going, and you're standing on your board. Yeah. You need to get on rail. So check this out. So here, he bottom turns, and he's seeing, okay, the section ahead's head's a little bit flatter. There's not that much lip. Look at that. That head upside down, toe wedge, carved back. Boom, that was amazing. And then this. So now... On your bottom turn, you were going, hey, I'm kind of struggling a little bit, and I'm saying you're trying too hard. L look at this. So from there, he just recovered into, bam. S look at that. Straight upset. He's, he's looking at his big toe. Nose is going vertical. Bam, nose to the beach. Okay. Yep, okay. <laughs> I don't know about quite, I don't know quite about to start with this. What well, I suppose my first question is, why can't why can't us mere mortals do this? Like what is so? Because you, you he makes it look easy. You look at it and you go, I'm not well, going to do that. I spent I just was in the wave pool for three hours. I caught sixty five waves 
at no point in time did I even come close to this. And that's after 65 waves. He grew up surfing St. Lou. He's probably getting like 65 waves a day. Do you understand? Surfing perfect. So you're, you, on your waves, you're doing maybe two turns. Yeah. All right. He's, he's at St. Lou. He's probably doing like seven of these. Okay. And he's just fine tuning, fine tuning, fine tuning the whole time. So the big takeaway is that if you're uncomfortable, you're going to cut the turn short. Yeah. Let's, let's go back to this. This very, very first. You, you talk about being uncomfortable. To turn at that point there in a wave for your, for your, for your, for your, your everyday, your average surfer, that's a pretty scary place to end up. Your average surfer's board is going to be flat and they are going <laughs> to be... Your average surfer's board isn't going to be there. Standing on top of the board. Jeremy Flores is upside, his board sideways and he's standing that way. So he's surfing in what we would call 3D. A lot of surfers approach it surfing in one dimensional or two dimensional and they don't want to get out of balance. They try surf balanced. Like you literally... The wave has to hit the underside of the board to, to help push the board around. Okay, I, so just rewind ever so quickly there, because I think you just said a golden nugget and you brushed over it really quick. And that is that most intermediates try to surf balanced. And if you think about it, that's when we, when we learn to surf, we're taught to balance. And yeah. then we spend the rest of our surfing journey trying to always stay balanced. But what you're saying is we need to actually surf unbalanced. Okay, so think of a kid learning how to ride a bicycle. Yeah. They're trying to balance. But think of someone who knows how to ride a bicycle. The first pedal they do, they're leaning forward and they pedal. And then they get the speed, then they balance. But when they want to turn, they're actually going off balance to turn. Yeah. They're leaning. Yep. Okay, so whenever we're traveling, like if you want to go for a run or a walk, you will lean into where you want to go. Okay, so beginners make the mistake of learning how to balance, but then they never get out of balance to assist turning. Right. They end up surfing flat. Okay, yep. Okay, and then they want to do flat and try to twist and turn, but the faster you go, that doesn't work. You need to almost start leaning and putting your board on rail for longer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, there's another turn that I wanted to show you, and it's... It's holding the turn until the nose comes out, and then you twist down. And so, uh, so again. Uh, the, sorry, this one, yeah, watch this. Um, yep. So look at the angle of that turn, nose up and out of the water, and he's looking back, bang, on the foam ball. So again, um, and this comes from the conversation that we just had where we were looking at the wave pool footage that, that I did. I honestly thought that I was looking Did you more, think you're doing that? I didn't think I was doing that, but I thought that I was looking at the point where the wave was going to break more. But then when we, when we look at my footage, I'm not there. But in my head, I think that I am there. And, and I, think that that's, that's a, I think that's a big problem that a lot of people watching this are going to face, is that they, they think that they're doing one thing, but the reality is that there's something completely different going on. And it's how do we... How do we understand that so that we can push ourselves to go more like you, this? All right. So when you were trying to barrel ride, you were saying, I'm trying to go that way, but my knees are pointing that way. So there's a disconnect. Yeah. But as soon as, And when you got your knees facing the nose of the board, you could barrel ride. Yeah. All right. So you're bottom turning and your knees are facing the beach when you're actually trying to hit the lip. So look at Jeremy Flores' knees. Right, so they're almost. Oh, that was like a, oh yeah, light bulb moment. Oh yeah, I've okay. realised now what I'm doing is wrong. So your hips aren't rotating, which means that as much as you're you're almost over twisting on your top half, but it's not transferring into the board. Does that make some sense? That makes a lot of sense. That I'm over moving the top, and the, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. and part of it's because you're going into a little bit flat, and you want to back foot. So you're pressing down and then over-rotating and you're bleeding speed and then you can't do the top turn. Mm. So if you just pointed the knees, you'd open the hip, you'd straight away see more, then do the twist and make sure you hit your target. Mm. Ready to go back to wave pool? Oh no, I think I might have to jump on a plane <laughs> and head back down again. 
Okay, so that knee, that kissing of the knee is in actual fact the way a golfer opens up the hip yeah. on their twist. And then it's the whole upside down. And remember I said nose to the foam? I really think that you could, if you dip your head, the tail will release more, you'll throw more spray, and then you'll make a way more comfortable landing that way. So, so oh. right, so, so I'm, I'm just trying to recap here for everybody, just, just, just so that we get this, because there's, there's been so much gold in this one. There's, so there is the being off balance. So we've got to start surfing off balance. Yes. Second thing is don't over move the top half and make sure that we bring the, so we, we've got to start combining the top and bottom half a lot more. So if you're over moving the top, the chances are the bottom is not transmitting through to the bottom. Okay, think about this. A tree blowing in the wind, those roots have to work really hard to keep it rooted. Yeah. So like your arms are moving like wickedly hard and fast but then your feet are rooted onto the board okay. and then your board's not moving. Yep. Okay, you almost want to be able to point the knees a lot more gently, open up a lot nicer and then be able to hit it. Okay. Does that make some sense? It because does make sense, if yeah. your bottom half is rooted, your board's going to be flat. You're going to struggle to go toe and heel edge. Yeah, using a very <laughs> yep. unfortunate now, choice of words. I'm, I'm also interested, rooted. when you were doing your top turn, I think when you're coming out of the turn that you were looking there, yeah, I, I'm, I'm well aware that all, that all of a sudden Clay's gone into um, comparing it to my surfing. So what it might be worth doing is... Let's put a clip on. Is actually put a clip on. I don't really want to bring this into the coach's eye, but... Um, I think it'd be really interesting because okay. an intermediate like yourself, you're looking for the, um, the fixes, but there's a couple of problems that we need to go through first of all. Okay, all right. Okay, this, this coach's eye is taking a complete tangent. Right, here we go, here we go. But this, it's, it's, it's going to be good. You're going to get a lot of value out of this. So let's go to this. Let's, should we go right back to, let's go right back to the very beginning so that we can okay. show everybody really bad versus not quite so bad. You, you can take control. Okay, so remember on that first turn I said intermediate surf flat. Yep. You're standing on the board. There yep. Jeremy Flores' head was bent over. Yep. So that was your first calf. The wave starts to stand up. So look at where your knees are pointing. They're pointing towards the beach. Yep. Where Jeremy was lunging, his knees are pointing that way. Yeah. Which means that he's not having to open up the chest nearly as much as you. So he's not over surfing. Your hand goes left to right. And at that point. Left right, so, sorry, can you just go back? Just because left, you say left right quite a lot. Just let me, when you say left right, what you're talking about is. My hands move along that plane okay. rather than... Think of tennis. Which is the most powerful way to serve? Should I th throw up and up serve? And so that is more powerful than, than left, right. Yep. So So just if, if anyone's wondering what Clay means by left, right, there's a classic example by yours truly. So, and if you lifted your hand above your head, like Jeremy Flores's hand, your board would track more vertical. Yep. But because you throw it left, right, your board tracks horizontally. Yeah. Now, also, when you do go left, right, remember at about that stage, Jeremy was upside down already? Yep. Okay, so that's what I mean, that you're in balance. Mm -hmm. You've got to put yourself off balance. When you do that, the board will respond quicker and it'll turn easier. Okay, yeah. so that was the first yeah. one. So let's look at this. So this is... This is okay. on a just just so there's there's gonna be a full YouTube video coming out on this where Clay actually breaks me down, um, <laughs> literally breaks me down so in, a bit, in a bit more detail. Check the knees. Your bottom half's locked. The board's flat. Yep. All right. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Let's watch over here. Second one. Bottom half's and there the top's really twisting. Yeah. But it's not transferring into the board. Okay. And then. But that, but that's that's to give you an idea because Clay keeps on referencing with the Jeremy Flores stuff. Let's go back to Jeremy Flores. Um, if you want to watch the full video of this, it will be coming out uh, either this week or next week. Oh, okay. <laughs> look at the difference. Look at oh, those no, knees. I feel even worse now. I felt bad before we started this look, video. Look at now the hand up. Worse. Look at the arm up at 12 there. The board tracking to 12. See, see that is a yeah. massive difference to compared to your left right. Yeah. And then watch this upside down. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, what a legend. Yeah. Okay. okay. So. That was a good one. I enjoyed that.
I'm glad that you enjoyed it. I wasn't quite so enjoying it. How much did you learn, Ed? I know you're bound, but you learned so much. No, no, no. I, I'm always learning. You know, you know that I'm always learning. And, I, and, I, and I'm always one to embrace... Let me put that full screen. I'm, I'm always one to embrace a journey. So let's just let's wrap this up now. If we were to give a couple of clear takeaways from Joe Flores, you say them. What, what do you want those couple of takeaways? What, what do you want people to take away from this after seeing Jeremy Flores and then looking at me? Try to, Ooh, try to point contrast. the knees. Straight away, that's going to open up the hip and it's going to relax the arms to then hit your target. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's step number one. Step two is hold the turn for longer. If you don't see your board going up at 12, you're never going to be hitting 12. Mm. Okay, so you can't just anticipate where you think it, where it's going. You actually have to almost lift this front arm and point at 12, then the board will track there. Yeah. Okay. Third thing. Are you going for three? Okay. Don't look down the line. It's going to cut your turn short. You almost want to be upside down looking at the foam ball and then go back to the foam ball. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to give you one extra. So we're going to have four takeaways. The fourth takeaway is <laughs> jump into the Ombi method. Guarantee you just learning the fundamentals is going to give you so much more knowledge to enable you to hopefully get to the point of Jeremy Flores. So head over to the link below, download the Ombi method, and here's a bit of information about it. The Ombi app is a free-to-download surf community and online surfing coaching platform. In the app, you can get access to exclusive content, including the Ombi method, which is an amazing free online course, which a lot of surfers have already said that that course alone has significantly improved their surfing. By downloading the app, you'll also be joining a huge international community of surfers of all skill levels supporting and helping each other improve. Also, join the app now and you'll get two weeks free access to our premium content. It's kind of like a Netflix for surfers, where you'll find all of our courses, there'll be land-based drills, water-based training, access to live coaching sessions, and you can also check out our monthly challenges. So what are you waiting for? Download the free Ombi app now and join the Ombiverse.